Welcome to a significantly more organized room full of guns. We have now taken a few and put them in there, just ready for ourselves. But just now, we're just um, gonna see if there's any more gems before we go on to the really juicy stuff. Bayonet's very important on every target rifle. So I quite like the fact that we've got all these custom painted air rifles in the racks. An original 50, I think. Original 50? RVS 50. Same thing. Proper Aladdin's cave, look at this. Level 2 2 by CG Bonehill for the Society of Miniature Rifle Clubs. Very large. Should be proper caliber. But not the two two's not proper caliber. I didn't mean that. A little VTR Remy for those who like such things. There's a couple of them actually. This is nice. Winchester Model 70. And I say nice, nice relatively. They're, they're good rifles. They're good rifles. But in terms of good rifles, there's hundreds about. There's a one down here I quite like. This is a Manlika Shunoa. These are really very nice. I think at least. Perhaps not the wisest of toys or tools. But look at that, you've even got your spare sight in the side there. That's um, a quality little sporting rifle there. 6.5 by 64. Little Bruno Effect single shot 308. There was a 243 over there. That's cool. For a nice, simple single shot rifle. There's a 243, a little bit nicer. You get that one screw cut. And we said all in relatively all right, having seen some of the nicest guns in the world, obviously. This is relatively all right. And a damn fun, accurate, single shot thing. That's really nice as well. The boys here said I'm stupid because I like this. It's a Remy 966. It's, um, I think it's nice. The, the other ones are nicer. This one is rancid. Um, absolutely rancid. And you do, obviously, being a sealed bid sale, it's where they put a lot of the stuff that perhaps is not quite nice enough to go elsewhere. However, if you spend a little bit of time scrolling through the listings or having a look, this is a Holland and Holland side lever. Barrel's a bit thin, apparently, in a 16 bore. You could own a Holland and Holland out of the sealed bid sale. It's not just average guns and boring stuff. Mark four, number one. Number four, Mark one, sorry. That's nice, um, not, not that nice, but it is nice. And that one's actually in a 410. Welded up 410 as well, so section two. Um, I wonder if it extracts. This is smart, I mean, really smart. Well, I say smart, it's painted black in very average order, but it is a single eight, and that in itself makes it attractive. And you're always better off that it's not in great condition, because. You have to be brave to buy it. Or, you know, have loads of spare time. Oh my god. There you go. We've looked at the really nice version of this. This is a 28 bar, 28 bore, 28 bore Akar Triple Crown. For those of us who can only dream of owning the nice one, this is the non ejector, less exotic version. Before we go and look at some more special stuff, we're gonna have a flick through the over and unders because as much as many of these probably will be classed by a lot of people as junk, stuff like this, a Nikko 6000, is firstly exceptionally built and secondly, absolutely beautiful. Hand finished engraving, the wood is nothing to write home about, but it's actually in really good order given the majority of these old Nikkos have either been really looked after, well looked after or have been absolutely hammered. This is a really nice example. And a little bit of a clean away from being a great spare gun, first gun, main gun if you're brave enough. Nice, really nice. So this is an almost new Baby Breton in terms of condition. The pad is, is indicator of age, if that is original. You have a real interesting checking pattern on these with that little rotate around the bottom. And obviously, the most interestingly, is the lockup system. No, the most interesting part about it is the weight. That this is, I think they're like two kilograms or 1.8 kilograms or 2.3 kilograms. They're the virtually weightless as shotguns go. Is it 1.8? I thought it doesn't really matter. You have chokes and the opening system. 
they unfortunately go for fair money. If they were reasonably priced, you'd buy one for a bit of a light walkabout fun gun. I say fair money, it's like three or four, five hundred quid at a push. That's not a lot of money, just more than perhaps you'd spend on an amusing gun when there are more amusing guns for the same money. This is a Zabala, a modern Zabala, ejector, side by side, multi choke, 20 ball. That's nice. That's really nice. Anyway. I think I've got ahead of myself. What's that? This is a fun game. Is it a completely nameless over and under? Yes, it is. A completely nameless over and under. Never guess who made it, but... There are many Turkish brands that go nowhere, one of which is one I've never even heard of before. This is called... It's actually a Hoglu. But it's called Hugsan. In bigger letters than the Hoglu. It is not nice. But if you buy it, it's really nice. A deluxe bagel. Look at that. Deluxe. What else have we got? Look at that, old 101. That's really nice, you know. Trap variant. What a lovely gun that is. Not a bad prospect, a little crack in the, no? No, it's a bit dirt. Nice, very nice. That's a solid gun. Double 10? Yeah, monster. Zabala, probably. Yeah, Zabala LP71, really nice guns for your entry level big gun market. Good, solid, relatively ugly, which is good because you're designing to take this out and go and shoot stuff. And they are, generally speaking, double 10, here's a double 10. Yeah, generally speaking, actually, not proofed for steel, but good for steel. There you go. What else have we got? Anything else interesting before we go? There's lots interesting, actually. That's awesome, that lovely little lightweight Zabala. That's nice. That is less nice, Winchester. Some proper gems in here, they really are. Anyway, let's go and look at, I know we looked at that already, but that is, that needs a good home. It really does need a good home. A few guns in here without names on. Unknown makers. Unknown makers is a realm for side by sides. Like, what would you make it? An over and under is generally from a market that people. There we go. Boato, Brazil. Great gun making country, Brazil. Only best quality, I heard. Great national anthem. Makes really good music for videos. Adjustable combed Mark 38 trap that I presume. I had enough. Feels like I had one of the chokes bored out. Bottom one, a little bit. Like feels more like a half than what it should be. A good quality, probably very reasonably priced clay gun that will get anybody started or finished for life. Really very pleasant. Five one five five. Shouldn't have told people that. There is a load of Berettas, by the way, that I haven't picked up. Forest, Forest favorite. That's an unusual one. Anyway, we're done. Let's, actually we're not done, have we? That's one of the silver pigeons with the flat black barrels. That's a good gun for anyone. That is a good gun for anyone, 5103. Great first gun, great any gun. I say first gun, quarter and a half, fixed choke. 30 inch, very nice. Anyway, let's go look at the sele selection of guns that we've picked out. Classic game, another Turkish delight, I think. And I say that in a non-derogatory fashion, just 
the unknown of a Turkish brand that you've... Oh, that is nice. There you go, there's a little hidden gem rusting away in the bottom there. The rustiest 687 WEWL you have ever seen. 20 bore kickies or absorbable kickies pad, not particularly well fitted. A lovely piece of wood on the stock there. No cracks, extra rust. The action is rancid, but the barrels are seemingly very good. 28 inch 20 bore fix choke. That would be worth a punt of anyone's money. That would clean up all right, or you could just leave it as it is. That's really nice, I like that. Had a bit of a life, but I don't think that you're gonna buy a gun like this and put a bid on it like you would a new one. You're gonna buy a gun like that and put a bid on it because of what it did. We had a look at this one already, that 10 ball muzzle loader, that's really smart, that's moved in here. But there is all sorts of other things that fall into that same category. There's another modern version, Pedasoli Kodiak 58. It's not quite the same, but, and that it's not a shotgun, but you know, this. What's that? Huntsman, Harrington and Richardson. Okay, thanks. That's nice, it's a modern Harrington. That's nice, sir. That's a little bit more like it, he says. No, it's really not. It's just a rusty make it look good pedestal. I have to apologize. And just another SKB. That is not a good. It's not even an SKB. It's a BSA SKB. A really early, absolutely rank one. Still pretty good for what it is. So I do apologize. It's not that bad. Needs no introduction. AO391 FAC death machine. Good guns. And that, the choke, the poly choke, always requires some kind of attention conversation because isn't that beautiful? Who doesn't need gold writing? Everyone needs gold writing. Is that? Yeah, the Rossi 410. Uh, I presume this is probably a FAC spec one, which is a shame. But who doesn't like the idea and it's a Rossi, which means it would, I was gonna say nothing bad, I'll shut up. The Rio Grande 410. Good fun 410 lever action that you can pick up for less than a good one. That's important. Anyway, come now and look at some of the exciting toys that we have dug out. So here is a gun that is very much worth buying and I was really hesitant to talk to you about because actually I will be bidding on this particular model. This is an SKB 885, 885 indicating that the 5 indicated is a multi-choke. The wood being glorious, the sling swivels being not glorious in the slightest. Hunting, standard SKB action there, locking bar on the top, absolutely amazing condition and extremely rare in this country, although not particularly high value. The fact that it is a side plate is a delight. Please do not bid on it. And if you do, don't be nasty and let me play with it if you win. What a beautiful gun. Sporting rib, double beads out on the 20 ball, maybe pull that middle one out. This could be the ultimate, apart from being very difficult to find spare chokes for, it's got a full and a half in there, which might not be ideal for long-term ownership. But what a beautiful handling, feeling, made gun that has could be picked up for not a great deal of money. I think that is stunning. I want it, I think. I could be wrong, but yeah. You always have to worry there's a reason these things can, can come into auction, you just have to hope. There's nothing wrong with it. There you go. Casting dispersions. Don't buy it. What's that? Is that a, that's a crack? A huge crack? I don't have it. It's right off that one. Yeah, right off. Not worth 100 quid. Um, we say in our household, because we have children, we cut us wearing now, so we use the term Spanish from things that are a bit taboo.
because it's code. As I was about to say, it's a bit Spanish, it almost came out. It's, it's, it's bad, it's very Spanish, but it's not actually Spanish, it's Japanese. So this is interesting. This is um, a, uh, a tower musket of sorts, you know. It's uh, got some of the hallmarks of being original and correct in certain areas. But it has had an extensive carving job done across the entire stock. You will not see another gun like this for a very long time. It's lot 2006. I mean, as a wall hanger, this is certainly an artistic piece, but this belongs in a case, glass case on the wall, where you don't look at it a lot, but occasionally look at it and feel like you own a piece of tribal art. It is fantastically done, and it is art in itself, but it is not that nice either. I like the fact that, presumably, the birds on the side yeah, it is a screaming mouth with a tongue. It's um, quite smart, but this brazed ring sight on the back is what tickles me the most. And whether this was done purely decoratively or what, I don't know. But I like... This is a... a <laughs> 1856 aim point. It's interesting, right? Let's give it that. This is a very interesting gun. And it is a piece of art. However, it does look like you'd buy it in a strange thing on the corner shop with tied iron elephants in the window. But it is, to be honest, still quite, it's a very interesting piece of art. It's a very interesting piece of art. And to be honest, an exceptional piece of carving for what it is, it's no moth gun. But it's as good as you're gonna get in a sealed bid, so, so don't complain. Before we go into the other room, oh, I love these, they are awesome rifles. Absolutely awesome. So behind you is some amazing taxidermy, by the way, and I hope that you enjoy a few of the bits of it that Sash will slow-mo in a sec. But here we have the pick, uh, the Holtz guys pick of the sealed bid auction. I mean, they haven't gone through everything and picked out, but they picked out some nice little special bits. So we're gonna start with this. So this would have started life as a 300 Rook made by Army and Navy. It is a good quality little 300 Rook that has been bored out to a 410. It is well put together, it is tight, it has a little safety catch on the side. It is a beautiful little thing that you could go out and have almost endless fun with until you realize that you would like the power of a 12 bore in which case you go home and get that but it is a beautiful little thing nonetheless like a genuinely beautiful thing the octagonal barrel pinned down to that you've got the where the rear sight was it's been filed off it's the only bad part about the conversion actually is it's quite obvious you've got a little dip there uh, where it's been filed but look look at that isn't that beautiful next Next, where's next, eh? Yeah, this is a Needham patent side lever. So if you watch these hammers as I pull this lever down, you can see that it actually pushes them both back, as well as pushing the pins back on the inside there. So suddenly, instead of having rebounding hammers, you've got everything that a rebounding hammer does when you open the gun. Actually quite clever. What it does do is leave a very Interesting. And the first little issue there, that closed when I slammed the gun, so it might not be as far from perfect, but as interesting guns go, this little Needham's patent is very interesting. Look at the shape of the locks, look at the shape of the whole detonation sort of area, look at the shape of the fences. It is a very interesting and unusual shape and style of gun. The woodwork under the ridiculous finish is actually quite nice. It's a little crack there. Like this is not the best order of gun, but it is damn exciting. Actually, really nicely put together for what it is. And if you're after technically interesting guns, you could go out and have a bit of fun with, but not perhaps take as your only gun, this is way up there on that list. This is a unusual but interesting looking gun. Unusual but interesting looking gun. Very nice. Just needs a little bit of love. 
a Horsley patent. Ready for this? Take this here, pull it back, and the gun opens up. Uh, this is just sold as a, a stock and action, unfortunately. The barrels will be cut and condemned. So when a, an action, a barrels get to a certain bad point, uh, these guys will cut them, get rid of them, and you can get the barrels, but they have a huge chunk cut out of the side so they cannot be restored. So when it gets to a point that a gun can only be sleeved, that is your choice, to only be sleeved. But a very, very pretty little gun. There's also a glaring stylistic choice when it comes to the trigger guard here. Uh, not particularly British, but also, well, it's not particularly modern, I suppose is probably the better thing to say there, but it is very nicely put together. And actually, I quite like it. It's a bit different. Browning 1885 in almost mint condition in 4570. There's a lot of that in here. You can see a lot of people um, wind up, or there's a lot of guns that end up in here that have very limited use in their lives. And just because their relative value means they don't get into the main sale means they get put in here. And actually, if you, again, like I said, scroll through their website enough, you can find these little beauties. Um, and as soon as COVID is done, you can come here and have a look at them. But why do you need to, realistically? Speaking to somebody who spent most of the time we've been here on condition reports, it's not like these guys don't get back to people with the right thing. Uh, speaking of condition, this is actually relatively good. This is the first Parker I have ever seen in hand. I've seen in hand for about seven years. And being a Parker, they're obviously very common and nice in America. They are not a bad quality, but they are far from exotic. It's um, a very different type of gun. It's You've got selectability, you've got safety on top, you've got non-auto safety on this one. You've got obviously a different style of walnut to what we get over here, and you have this gigantic forehand. This is a very practical gun, a very practical, and if you compare it to many of these others, you um, you can tell it's culturally very different. Interesting, very interesting gun. I know the Americans go rather mad for them, but V-grade for two and three quarter inch shells. It'd be one of the hardest cybersides you'd ever buy. Interesting, again, very interesting. I should have done a full review on it really, but the barrels on it are dead, so it's not like we can even go and use it. Another one the barrels are dead on is this. This is a W and C Scott with the patent crystal indie slot indicator, crystal crystal safety indicator. It's actually spelt. Yeah. This is um W and J Langham and a W and C Scott and Son patent block safety hammerless. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, what's interesting here is this. It's a little crystal to which you can see if it is, I'll just watch. Isn't that cool? I mean, stylistically, it's a very interesting looking gun. You've got a swan and a duck and your patent crystal indicator. Very interesting lock shape. All round, very smart, interesting gun, but this one, again, just a barreled action, but it is, oh, sorry, it's just a stock and action. But it is interesting. W and J Langham on the side. It's a nice, smart thing. Very smart. What's this? Oh yeah, a Boss. A Boss and Co. Rotary under lever. Hammer gun in the sealed bid auction, alongside all this other stuff. So, the stock on this one is not very nice. Uh, and I say not very nice, the stock on this one will probably work, but is, apart from that, is not that great. So you've got two pieces of wood bonded together. It is not wildly well done. And in fact, the whole gun is a little loose and could do with a little bit of love. But you could own a boss for not massive money. I, I might even put a bidder on this one, just because with love, Look, it is a best quality gun. It is far from anything else. The trigger guard needs a bit of work, but not an impossible amount of work. It's a stock job. Um, and even then you could buy it and live with it. I probably couldn't live with it. But is that not one of the most beautiful guns you could own for very limited money? Yes, by the way, is the answer to that. Which brings us to the last two. 
What is this? Charles Boswell. This is very interesting. Very interesting. Here, look at that wood. What a beautiful piece of wood. Look at that carving around the headstock there as well. Also very interesting. And they get a lot of this. Someone's clearly bought this and thought we'd re they'd refurb it, but given up halfway. This is a good quality gun. A good quality gun indeed. I like that. And then last, but certainly not least, a Calvert. Calvert Commercial Street Leeds. That is a nice looking gun. Actually under the wood there, but not that nice and it's not worth bidding on. <laughs> Isn't that right, Simon? Yeah, no, don't buy it, don't buy it. There you go. Like all the best things in this sale. <laughs> Don't bid on them. No, don't bid on that. That's lovely. No, it's not. <laughs> and that was a very, very small portion of the sealed bid sale. Um, to say there is two and a half times what is in that room, it's insane. And this is what I'm going to finish on. This is an Allen's patent rotary death machine. It's hard to describe how cute it is to watch this barrel rotate around the spiky bit on the end. But this is truly a very nice little work of art. You can own without a license. And tickles my knife gun fantasies. Guys, hope you enjoyed it. See you later.